Hello my dear friends, I hope you're doing super duper wonderful and in today's video you will learn the 5 best ways to create looping animations in PowerPoint. And with looping animations you can do so many incredible things. You can make your slides much more dynamic, bring your illustrations to life, highlight different elements on your slide or create animated backgrounds for your presentations and so much more. So let me show you the 5 best ways to loop or repeat animations in PowerPoint and first of all let's start with something that I call a simple loop or a simple repeat animation. And now let me show you a couple of simple loop animation examples and first of all as you can see this little star is spinning around and that spin animation just keeps on going. And the same with this 3D soccer ball as you can see it's just turning around and the animation just keeps on going. And over here we have this little highlight and we can make it go around the edges of this rounded rectangle. And once again as you can see the animation keeps on repeating. And now let's just take a look at the bottom left corner of the slide and over here as you can see a ship comes in and it goes from left to right. So for this ship I have applied a motion path line animation and I've made sure that this animation keeps on looping. And next my friends, let's take a look at the slide title and for this guy I have applied a text wave animation and once again this animation is just simply repeating. And now my friends, let me show you how you can create all of these beautiful animations yourself step by step. And now let me just duplicate the current slide so that we can delete all of the animations and start from scratch. So let's jump into animations, let's go into the animation pane. Over here we can see all of the animations, so let's just select them all. And let's make sure that we remove them, OK. And now let's start by adding a spin animation to this little beautiful star. So let's make sure that we select this star. Let's go to this Add Animation button and let's click on Spin Animation. And here it is. OK, so for the start let's leave it on click. Duration, let's use 3 seconds. Now in the effect options you can choose direction, let's leave it clockwise and you can choose the amount of spin, let's go with full spin. And now let's double click the spin animation and this way we can open up the spin animation options and over here we have this timing tab. So let's go into timing and over here we have this repeat option and this is where the magic happens, we can expand the menu and we can choose the exact number of times we'd like this spin animation to repeat. You can as well choose to repeat your animation until the next click or until the end of slide. And I usually go with repetition until the end of slide. And just look what happens to this animation bar once we click OK. And since we have chosen animation repetition until the end of slide, as you can see this animation bar extends to the right side infinitely, showing that this animation is just going to be keep on looping. So let's check it out on the full screen. And now let's just click once to start the spin animation and as you can see this little star is spinning and looping successfully. That's super duper awesome. Ok my friends and next let's select this 3D soccer ball, ok as you can see it's a 3D model. Let's jump into animations, let's expand the animation menu and over here as you can see we have this 3D animation section. Let's just select this turntable animation, that's beautiful. And now we can jump into the effect options of this turntable animation and for the amount let's choose continuous which will basically make this turntable animation constantly looping. Ok, so for the duration let's use something faster, for example 5 seconds. And as before we can select the turntable animation in the animation pane, let's double click to jump into the animation options. And now in the timing tab as you can see the repetition is already set to until the end of slide because for the amount we have chosen continuous. And now let's just check it out on the full screen. And now on the first click we make this little star spin and on the second click we make this 3D soccer ball spin. That's nice. And as you already know we can make animations repeat until the end of slide or until the next click. So let's actually see what happens if we would set the star spin animation to repeat until the next click instead of until the end of slide. So now once we click for the first time the little star should start spinning and once we click for the second time the soccer ball should start spinning and the star should stop at the same time. So let's check it out. Let's click once to start the spin animation of this little star and on the second click as you can see that star should stop and the 3D soccer ball should start spinning. That's nice and as you can see this little star stopped exactly where it was before the second click. And I believe that this kind of animation behavior where the animation is being repeated until the next click might be really useful in these kind of slides where you have a wheel of fortune. So you can just make this wheel of fortune spin as long as you wish. And once you would click for the second time the wheel would stop exactly where it was once you clicked for the second time. And now let's just press the left arrow key two times to rewind all of the animations. 
and now we can spin that wheel once again. Okay my friends, so let me show you how you can easily and quickly create this Wheel of Fortune animation by yourself as well. Okay, so first of all, let's delete these two animations so that we can start from scratch. And by the way, this is how this Wheel of Fortune is constructed. We have this colorful part and you can actually select any part that you wish and customize it. And this illustration comes from freepick.com, it's absolutely free, link is in the video description. And here at the top we have a simple text box saying result, you can of course type in anything that you wish. So let's just make sure that we select this colorful part with all of these sections and let's just add a spin animation to it, okay? Let's make sure it starts on a click. For the duration, let's use one second and now let's jump into the animation options and for the repetition, let's choose until the next click. And now the next click is going to be the animation of this text box, okay? So let's make sure that the text box is selected and for this guy, let's choose, let's apply a fade animation. Let's make sure it starts on a click, okay? So this is the first animation, the spin animation, and this is the second animation, the fade animation for the text box. So let's click once to start the spin animation, and once we click for the second time, the wheel stops and we see the result text box. That's super duper awesome, and you can always hit the left arrow key twice to rewind all of the animations and spin that wheel again. Okay my friends, so let's get back to our simple loop animation slide, and now let me show you how we can make this little highlight follow the edges of this rounded rectangle, okay? And for this animation to happen, we'll have to use a custom motion path. And before that, let me actually show you how I've made this little highlight. So this is just a simple circle with a gradient fill, with a radial gradient fill with two color stops. Both of the colors are white, but one of those colors has 100% transparency. And to make this highlight extra soft, I've added a little bit of soft edges effect. As you can see, I have used eight points. Feel free to use as much or as little soft edges effect as you wish. And I think this way it's looking beautiful. So now let's add that custom motion path animation. So let's make sure that our highlight is selected. Let's scroll down to motion path animations. And this time let's choose a custom motion path. And now I just basically make two clicks for each of the corners. So let's click here, click here. Let's go to this corner, click, click. Let's go over here, click, click. And now let's just make sure that we connect the ending point with the starting point and we get a beautiful custom motion path. And now let's just double click the motion path animation to open up the animation options and we can remove smooth start and smooth end, we don't need that. And now in the timing tab, let's choose repetition until the end of slide, that's beautiful. And now for the motion path duration, let's use 5 seconds and of course you can choose whichever speed you wish or duration. So let's check it out on the full screen and with the first click that little star starts to spin and with the second click, the star actually stops and now the soccer ball is spinning. And with the third click, that little custom motion path animation with that little highlight is looping. So that's super duper awesome. And now let me show you how we can take a 3D model of a ship and add a looping motion path line animation to it. And before that, let's just select that little star. Let's go into the timing repetition and let's just select until the end of slide. Okay, so that whenever we click for the second time, that star won't stop. Okay, so here it is a 3D model of a beautiful ship. As you can see, we can rotate it whichever way we wish with that 3D handle. But let's just keep it this way. And now let's just move this ship to the left side outside of the slide, just like that. Let's make sure that the ship is selected. Let's go to add animation. Let's scroll down to motion path animations and let's choose lines, okay? And now in the effect options, let's make sure that we choose direction right because we want this ship to go to the right side. And now let's just grab this red bubble, which is the ending position of the animation. And let's just make sure that this red bubble is somewhere outside of the slide on the right side, okay? And now let's just double click the motion path animation to jump into the animation options. Let's remove smooth start and smooth end. And for the timing, let's use repetition until the end of slide. That's beautiful. And for the duration, let's just use 5 seconds, okay? And let's check it out on the full screen. So let's just launch that star animation, okay, let's launch this football. And next we have this little looping highlight that is beautiful and with the fourth click we get this looping ship. That's super duper awesome and if you feel that this ship is going a little bit too fast, you can always jump back into the duration field, okay. So let's make sure that the ship animation is selected and for the duration let's just use for example 10 seconds. So now this uh, ship animation will have 10 seconds for one loop to complete which will basically mean that this animation will be happening slower, okay? And next, my friends, let me show you how we can add a beautiful looping wavy animation to the slide title. So let's make sure that the slide title is selected. Let's go into the animations. Let's go into the emphasis category, okay? And over here, we have all of the text animations that we can apply and let's just choose wave. 
and the text wave animation is somewhat similar to all of the motion path animations because it has those two bubbles the green one which is the starting position and the red one which is the ending position and in this case with the red bubble you can adjust how high your wave animation is going to happen and now let's just jump into the text wave animation options let's make sure that the text is being animated by letter delay 10 percent and for the repetition let's use until the end of slide that's my favorite repetition option okay and we can check out this wave animation directly in the animation pane but let's just launch the presentation and let's uh, enjoy all of these animations one more time on the full screen and with the last click we get this beautiful text wave animation that's super duper awesome easy peasy lemon squeezy and by the way all of these slides of this tutorial will be added to the powerpoint animation mastery i'll add all of these slides to the second chapter just below the smoothing and reversing powerpoint animation lesson and if you have already joined the powerpoint animation mastery with full access then all of these tutorial slides are absolutely free for you that's super duper awesome okay my dear friends and next let me show you one more awesome way to create looping animations in powerpoint and these are auto reversing looping animations as you can see this diver is going up and down and basically the animation is just auto reversing and all of these little fishes have the same auto reverse animation but as you can see they're going horizontally instead of vertically and this pulsing button as well has an auto reverse animation applied to it and now let me show you how you can create all of these beautiful animations step by step okay and as before let's make sure that we duplicate the current slide and now let's jump into the animation let's open up the animation pane and let's delete all of the animations so that we can start from scratch and now let's just select the diver and of course you can choose any element on your slide that you wish and now let's go to add animation and let's look for a motion path line animation here it is let's click on it and now for the animation direction let's choose up and now with this red bubble we can adjust how high we would like for this diver to go up so for example to this uh, position looking beautiful okay so now this animation starts on a click for the duration we can leave two seconds and now let's jump into the animation options and as you can see we already have a bit of smooth start and smooth end so that's good and over here we have this magical checkbox auto reverse so let's make sure it is activated and now let's just check it out so as you can see the diver goes up and it auto reverses it comes back to the starting position that's nice but now this animation plays just a single time and to make it loop as you already know we have to go into the timing tab and let's just choose repetition until the end of slide so now the diver should be going up and down until we move to the next slide okay looking beautiful and once again if you believe that your animations are playing too fast or too slow it means you have to adjust the animation duration and in this case let's make this diver go a bit slower by increasing the animation duration to three seconds and we can as well reduce the distance of the motion path and now as you can see this diver is going up and down at a slower pace that's nice and next my friends let's animate one of those little fishes and to save some time we can use the animation painter so let's make sure that the diver is selected let's click on the animation painter and now let's just click on this fish and skadoosh the same animation has been pasted and now let's just make sure that we select the motion path of this fish let's grab that red bubble and let's adjust the ending position so let's just drag it somewhere to the left side just like that and now this fish should be going to the left side okay and now let's jump into the animation pane let's adjust the animation duration let's use for example four seconds and now we can double click to jump into the animation options we have smooth start we have auto reverse and for the timing we have repetition until the end of slice so everything is looking beautiful let's just make one more adjustment so for the second animation let's make sure it is started with previous which means that with a single click we will basically start both of the animations the diver and the fish animation and skadoosh on a single click both of the animations are being launched so we have this diver going up and down and we have this little fish going left and right and all of this is possible because we have chosen repetition until the end of slide and as well we have activated that little auto reverse checkbox that's nice and next my friends let me show you how we can make this button pulse so let's make sure that the button is selected let's go to add animation and this time let's choose a grow shrink animation okay let's make sure it starts on a click and for the duration let's use something really short for example half a second and now let's jump into the animation options and let's choose a growth percentage for our animation let's use something subtle for example 110 percent okay no smooth start is needed let's make sure that auto reverse is enabled and now in the timing tab once again let's use repetition until the end of slide okay so now this button should be basically growing and shrinking and growing and shrinking so let's just check it out 
Let's click the first time to launch the diver and the fish and with the second click we launch this button. And as you can see the animation is happening pretty slow. So let's get back to the uh, duration field, here it is. And let's just use 1.25 seconds and this time the animation should be happening much faster. So let's check it out once again. And as you can see this time the button is pulsing much faster, that's nice. So just keep in mind that you can always go into the duration field and adjust how fast your animations are being played. And in the same way you can animate the rest of the elements on your slide. Ok my dear friends and next let me show you how you can create seamless loop animations in PowerPoint. So on this slide I have a couple of beautiful colorful fishes, ok. And now let me show you how we can seamlessly loop all of these fishes so that it seems that new fishes are constantly coming in. And before that let's make sure that we insert a full screen rectangle. We can first of all insert a small rectangle align it to the top left corner of the slide. And now let's just grab this corner and let's extend this rectangle so that it nicely covers the whole slide, ok. And now let's just send this rectangle to back so that it is behind the rest of the elements, ok. And now let's make sure that we select the rectangle and we can hold down the shift key and make sure that we select all of the fishes as well. We don't have to select the slide title. And now let's just right click on all of these elements and let's choose group. Let's group all of these guys into a single beautiful group, ok. As you can see we can move all of these elements at once, that's nice. And now let's make a copy of this group. So let's just hit Ctrl C, Ctrl V to make a copy or Ctrl D if you wish to use just a single shortcut. And now let's just move this copy to the left side just like that. And we can select this rectangle inside of this group and let's just change its color so that it's easier to differentiate between these two groups. And now let's just align this purple uh, group to the left edge of the blue group, just like that, ok? Let's make sure that we precisely touch the edges of both of these groups, that's nice. And next my friends, let's make sure that we select both of these groups and let's group them into one big single group, just like that. So now we can move both of these groups at the same time, that's nice. And now let's apply a motion pathline animation to this huge group, ok? So let's select it, let's go to animations and let's look for motion path animations. And let's choose the motion path line animation that's beautiful and for the direction let's use right. And now my friends will have to adjust the ending position of this animation. So let's just grab this red bubble and let's move it precisely to the right edge of the slide. So basically all of those fishes from the purple rectangle should perfectly overlap all of the fishes on the blue rectangle. Ok, so now the motion path animation distance is set correctly. Now let's jump into the animation pane and let's adjust the duration of this motion path. So instead of 2 seconds, let's use something longer, for example 10 seconds. And now in the animation options, let's remove smooth start and smooth end. No auto reverse is needed, but for the repetition, let's make sure we choose until the end of slide, ok? And now let's see what we have created so far, so let's check it out on the full screen. Let's click once to launch the animation. And now all of these fishes are moving to the right side, ok, as you can see the purple rectangle is coming in. And once the purple rectangle touches the right edge of the slide, the animation resets itself and it just keeps on looping, that's nice. So now that we know how this animation works, we can make these huge rectangles invisible. So let's just select the blue rectangle, let's jump into the format shape and for the fill, let's choose no fill. And let's do the same for the purple rectangle, let's choose no fill. So now both of these rectangles are invisible and now we can see all of those fishes and we can see the slide background. And now let's check out the animation once again. So as you can see all of these fishes are nicely and slowly swimming into the right side and new fishes are constantly coming in. And this way we have created this seamless loop animation. And you can use this technique for anything that you wish, for example clouds. Maybe you'd like to add some moving clouds to your slides and you could definitely make that happen with this seamless loop animation technique. Ok my friends, and next let me show you one more situation where we could use this seamless loop animation technique. So let's say we have these two beautiful boxes with some icons and some text inside and we have this dotted line in between. So with a seamless loop animation technique we can make this dotted line move to the right side infinitely. That's super duper awesome, so let me show you how you can make that happen as well. And as always let's just duplicate the slide and on the duplicate slide let me first of all remove a couple of invisible masks. I'll show you how we can make that happen and let's just uh, delete this dotted line for now. We'll make it from scratch, ok? And over here we have two groups of elements, so just basically two boxes with some icons and some text. And now let's create that dotted line, so let's go to insert, let's go to shapes. 
Let's look for the line tool and I'll let's just start from the center of this first box and let's go to the center of the second box, okay? You can hold down the shift key to draw a straight line and let's make sure there is no line transparency and for the width I'm using three points. And I'll just pick any dash type that you like, okay? And now let's duplicate this line, let's select the line, hold down the control and shift keys to make a copy. And now let's just change the color of this second line so that we can better distinguish between these two lines. And let's move this guy to the left side, just like that. And actually let me change the color for this second line to something brighter, for example, this red color is looking good. And now we'll have to precisely attach this red dotted line to the white line. And to make this process easier, let me show you a little trick that we can use. So let's just insert a vertical line, just like that. Now let's make sure that we select the vertical line, let's select the white dotted line as well, and let's align both of these guys to the left side, okay? So now this vertical line is precisely at the left edge of the white line. And next let's make sure that both of the dashed lines are at the same level. Now let's select the red dashed line, this vertical line, and let's align them to the right edge, okay? And now we can delete this vertical line and these two dashed lines are now perfectly connected. That's nice. And next my friends, let's make sure that we select both of the dashed lines and let's group them into a single group. So we can just hit Ctrl G or just right click and choose group. And now both of these guys are in a single group. That's nice. So let's select this group of dashed lines and let's add a motion path animation to it. Let's go to add animations. Let's scroll down to motion path animations. Let's choose line. For the direction, let's use right. Okay. And now let's move that red bubble precisely to the center of the second box. So in the same way as with fishes, now these red lines should perfectly overlap those white lines, okay? Just like that. You can zoom in if you wish to make sure that you are precisely setting the red bubble. Okay, I think it's looking good. So now the motion path animation distance is set correctly. Let's just make sure that we make both of the lines white, okay? And let's make sure that both of these text boxes are sitting in the front so that those dashed lines are sitting in the back. And of course we have to hide this part and this part on the slide. And for that we can insert two rectangles and we can set their fill to slide background fill. And since the slide background is using a beautiful gradient picture, those rectangles will be using the same picture as well and it would look like as if those rectangles are invisible, okay? So let's make sure that we choose slide background fill for both of these rectangles and skadoosh as you can see they act as masks. Let's just make sure that we send them to back and once again let's send that dashed line to back. And now we're pretty much ready. The left side and the right side are being masked. As you can see if we move these lines below we can see them but once we bring them back the left side and the right side are being masked and this is what we want. And once again the slide background fill is set to picture. And after that we can set the fill of these rectangles to slide background fill and this way those rectangles will be looking invisible and this way we can use them as masks. And now my friends let's jump into the animation pane and let's adjust this motion path a little bit. So let's make sure it starts on a click and in the animation options let's make sure there is no smoothing, no auto reverse is needed but for the timing let's use until the end of slide, click OK and now let's just check it out. Let's just click once to launch the animation and skadoosh, the line is scrolling to the right side infinitely. That's awesome. And if you feel that this line animation is playing too fast, let's increase its duration to 5 seconds. And now it's playing at a slower speed. That's nice. And as you can see, one of those dashes is a bit longer than the rest of the dashes. So I guess this was the connecting point of those two dashed lines. But that's okay. You can still use this beautiful seamlessly looping animation for your lines. Okay my dear friends and now let me show you one more awesome way on how you can use the seamless loop animation. As you can see on this slide we have a bunch of little dots and once I start the animations as you can see all of those little circles are moving upwards and this way we get a beautiful seamlessly looping background animation that's super duper awesome. And by the way this slide is from the intro of this video and as you can see this slide was made entirely in powerpoint. And now let me show you how you can make it as well. And now in the selection pane let's hide everything except those little circles. And now let me zoom out so that you can see how everything looks like. So basically I have filled the whole slide with those little dots then I made a duplicate just below the slide and I have grouped all of those dots into a single group and applied a motion path animation direction upwards. And in the animation options I've made sure that this motion path animation is being repeated until the end of slide, okay. Duration 17 seconds, no smooth start or smooth end is needed. 
And that's the whole secret, okay? So as you can see, the travel distance is from the bottom to the top of the slide. And now let's just launch this animation and skadoosh, we have a beautiful, seamlessly looping dotted background animation. That's nice. And once again, all of these tutorial slides will be attached to the PowerPoint Animation Mastery second chapter just below this moving and reversing PowerPoint Animations lesson. Okay, and now let's just keep on going. Okay, my dear friends, and the next best way to create looping animations in PowerPoint is by using something that I call a pause loop. So on this slide, we have a football field, we have some players, and let's say we'd like to draw a couple of lines showing how these players are passing the ball to each other. So let's do that. Let's jump into the draw tab. Let's pick any pen that we wish. Of course, you can choose any color, choose any thickness that you wish. And now let's just draw a couple of lines showing how the ball is traveling from one player to another. And you can always hit Ctrl Z to undo if you wish. Okay, so let's say that this player is passing the ball to this guy. Then this guy passes the ball to this guy and so on. So let me just draw a few more lines and I'll catch you in a second. Alright, so now all of the lines are ready and now we can deselect the pen by selecting the mouse cursor. And now let's just jump into the selection pane and let's see what's going on. As you can see, PowerPoint has grouped all of those inks or all of those lines into a single group. So that's really convenient. Now we can animate all of these guys at once. And now in the animations tab, as you can see, we have this special category called ink. And let's choose the replay animation and now we can just basically replay or redraw all of these lines. That's awesome. And once again, if you feel that these animations are playing too fast, let's increase the duration to, for example, five seconds. And now these lines are being replayed at a slower pace. That's nice. Okay, my friends, so we have added this replay animation. And now let's see what would happen if we would loop it or repeat it until the end of slide. So let's make sure that the repetition is set to until the end of slide. And let's check it out on the full screen. So let's just click once to launch the animation and now all of these uh, lines are being replayed, okay? And as you can see, once the final line is being drawn, all of these lines just reset and the animation starts over again. And let's say you'd like to have a little hold or a little pause here at the end where you can see all of the lines. And this is a perfect situation where we could use a pause loop, okay? So let me show you how we can set it up. And first of all, let's jump into the replay animation options and let's actually remove the repetition. Okay, let's just set it to none because we'll be using a different method. And the first step is to find out how long your animation is. So we know that this replay animation is five seconds. And now a really unusual thing that we'll have to do, we'll have to record an empty audio clip. So let's just go to insert, let's go to audio and let's just click record audio. And now we'll have to record an audio clip, which is just a bit longer then our animation, so our animation is 5 seconds, so we can record a clip that is, for example, 7 seconds long, okay? And now let's just click on the stop button, ask a douche, we have recorded a 7 seconds long audio clip, okay? So, so far it might seem really unusual, but let's just keep on going, let's jump into the playback options, let's click on trim audio, and here we can see exactly how long this audio clip is. So let's make sure that it is exactly seven seconds long. Okay. And let's make sure that our speaker symbol is still selected. And now over here in the playback tab, we have this awesome button called add bookmark that allows us to add bookmarks to this audio clip. So let's just click on the add bookmark button and let's see what happens. And as you can see, now we get this little bubble at the beginning of the audio clip. And this is our bookmark that we're going to use. Okay. And now one more important step, let's make sure that this audio clip is being looped until stopped. Okay, so this audio clip will be just looping until stopped and this is what we want. And now in the animation pane, let's make sure that we select our replay animation. Let's go to animation tab. Now let's go to triggers and let's make sure that this animation is being triggered by bookmark one. And that bookmark one is that a little bubble and that little bookmark that we have added to our empty audio file, okay? And since we have set the audio file to loop, that little bookmark will be looping as well and triggering our replay animation each time as well. So let's check it out on the full screen. So here at the top, we can see our little audio file and let's just click once to launch the animation. And as you remember, the replay animation takes five seconds. And since the audio file is seven seconds, we get two second pause or two second delay at the end, okay? So this is where the magic happens. By making the audio file just a bit longer than the animation, we create a pause or a hold at the end of the animation, okay? 
And by the way, if you would like to hide the speaker symbol during slideshow, you could just move this speaker outside of the slide, or we can just jump into the playback options and make sure that the hide during show checkbox is activated, and now it should be invisible. Okay, looking beautiful. So as I mentioned before, this technique might be really unusual if you haven't done it before, but just give it a try and I'm sure you'll find how easy and powerful it is. Okay, my dear friends, and now let me show you one more awesome way to create looping animations in PowerPoint, and this is something that I call a sequence loop. Let's jump into the animation pane, let's see what's going on, as you can see we have a couple of animations, let's just check them out, and here we get a beautiful Polaroid camera flashing and making a photo and as you can see that photo just flies out that's awesome so first of all we have this little rounded rectangle this is the camera flash okay and next we have our camera and this camera is made out of two parts so this is the top part this is the bottom part and these are just two pictures of a polaroid camera and the top picture is actually cropped as you can see the bottom part is cropped just to make some space for this photo to come out, okay? And this photo has a couple of animations applied to it as well, okay? And let's check out all of these animations once again, that's nice. And now let's say we'd like to loop all of these animations, let's say we'd like to loop this sequence of animations. So let's try selecting all of these animations and let's just go into the effect options, let's go into the timing tab and let's see what would happen if we would choose repetition until the end of slide. As you can see in the animation pane, now all of the animations are set to loop, so let's check it out on the full screen. Let's see if those animations are looking correct. And as you can see, there is definitely something not right with this animation. And this is the exact situation where we can use the sequence loop animation. So let me show you how we can do that. First of all, let's undo the repetition for all of the animations. And now let's check when does the last animation end. So it ends at 2 seconds, that's nice. And now once again we'll have to record an empty audio clip, so let's go to audio, record audio, and now let's make sure that this audio clip is a bit longer than our whole animation sequence, so let's make it 3 seconds, okay. And we can always select our audio clip, let's go into the playback tab, and we can always trim our audio clips if we wish, let's just click on the trim audio button, and now it is 3.5 seconds, let's make it for example 2.5 seconds, and let's just hit OK. And now let's make sure that this audio clip is being looped until stopped, OK. And let's add an audio bookmark, so let's click on the add bookmark button, as you can see we get that little bubble. And we can as well check this checkbox hide during show so that we don't see that uh, speaker symbol during the slideshow. And now let's make sure that we select all of the animations that we want to loop and let's make sure that they are triggered on bookmark 1, OK. And now all of these animations, all of this animation sequence will be triggered by this little bookmark. And this time the animation looping should be looking much better. So let's check it out. Let's click once to launch the animation and as you can see, now we get a beautiful sequence of animations. So the camera flashes and then the photo comes out and it flies away. Nice. And by the way, I think we get a little pause at the end of the animation because the audio file is just a bit longer than the whole animation. As you remember, the animation, the last animation ends at 2 seconds and our audio clip is 2.5 seconds. So we can trim this audio to, for example, 2.1 second. And this way there should be pretty much no pause between the animation loops. So let's check it out once again. So here is the whole loop and here we get a second loop. That's nice. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, my dear friends, and now let me show you one more extra bonus way to create looping animations in PowerPoint, and that is by creating GIFs from your PowerPoint animations. So let me show you how we can make that happen. So over here on this slide, I have inserted this sticker photo. And by the way, if you have Microsoft 365, you should be able to go to Insert Shapes, I mean Insert Icons, go to Stickers, and just find this category called Handy. And over here, you'll find all of these handy stickers, and this guy is just one of those handy stickers, okay? And before we continue, let me actually change the rotation center of this sticker. Currently, as you can see, it is rotating just like that, and I would like this sticker to rotate alongside its bottom edge. So let me show you how we can do that. First of all, let's turn on these light guides so that we can see where is the center. Now let's position this guy somewhere over here so that that bottom edge is touching the center of the slide. And now let's just insert a huge circle which is bigger than the sticker. Okay, let's make sure that that circle is perfectly aligned to the center and let's send it to back. Let's make sure it's bigger than the sticker. And now we can just select both of these guys. You can hold down the shift key to do that. 
And now let's just group them into a single group. And skadoosh, now we have a new rotation center for this sticker. Now let's just make sure we select this circle and let's make it invisible by setting the fill to no fill. All right, and now we can turn off those slide guys and as well we can resize this sticker. You can hold down the control and shift keys to do that. And now let's just add any animation that we wish to this sticker. For example, a spin animation. So let's make sure that the sticker is selected and let's jump into animations. Let's go to add animation and let's look for spin animation. And now let's jump into the animation pane and for the duration let's use short duration for example half a second. Now let's jump into the animation options and let's make sure auto reverse is enabled and for the amount of spin let's use for example 45 degrees. And I think we can as well add a bit of smooth start and smooth end so let's use 0.25 seconds for the start and end. And that's nice, let's check out how the animation looks so far, looking beautiful, we can rotate this guy a bit to the left side, okay, looking beautiful. And now let's make sure that we remember the slide number of this sticker guy, so the slide is 15, number 15, so let's remember that. And now one more important step, let's make sure that there is no slide transition applied to this slide, so let's make sure it's none, because GIF animations really don't like slide transitions, it just doesn't look right. And now let me show you how we can export this animated sticker. Let's go to File Export. Let's choose Create an Animated GIF. Choose any quality that you like. I'm going with Extra Large. And next, let's make sure that the GIF is going to be exported with a transparent background. That's nice. And for the time, let's use 0 seconds. PowerPoint will calculate it automatically. And for the slides, let's use from 15 to 15 because this is where our sticker guy is. And let's just click on that button, Create GIF. Choose your destination. Give your beautiful GIF a name. And let's just click on save, okay? Alright, so our GIF should be ready and now let's get back to this slide where I have already previously inserted some GIFs. Let's delete these guys. And now let's go to insert, let's look for pictures, let's click this device, let's find our GIF image and let's click insert and skadoosh. Here it is, our beautiful rotating spinning sticker guy. That's nice, we can resize it if we wish. And we can as well make some copies. So let's make sure that our sticker guy is selected. Let's hold down the control key and let's make a copy. We can resize any sticker the way we want. That's nice. And let's just add one more guy just for fun so that these guys, you know, would have more fun. That's nice. And now let's check out all of these GIF animations on the full screen. And as you can see, all of these sticker guys are successfully looping and rotating left and right. That's beautiful. Congratulations my friend, now you are a true looping PowerPoint animation legend. And if you'd like to learn how you can create this incredible scrolling bar animation in PowerPoint, then check out this video. I'll see you there.